just to make sure I don't forget. And we're gonna start streaming to YouTube. Great. Hi everybody, welcome. Yay. Glad you guys are here. We'll, we'll be setting up for just a minute. There was another webinar right before this. So come on in, get comfortable, grab a favorite beverage. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. And if you are able to, please drop in the chat um, who you are, where you're calling in from, your zip code, and maybe something you're excited to talk about tonight on this webinar. Yeah. All right, we're preparing to live stream. It's taking us to YouTube. Um, it's loading. Welcome, Gerald. Oh, I'm just north of you in Prosper. Oh, Monterey, great. We all, it's always fun in webinars to see where people are calling in from. Awesome. Good. Good Welcome. Try to stream one more time. Oh my gosh, what a great audience. Welcome, everybody. Look at all these time zones we have covered. Awesome. Oh yeah, good idea, Katie, the weather too. <laughs> Ooh, San Diego, because a couple in California, great. New York, excellent. Wow, oh my gosh, look, three from New York, awesome. We've been thinking about you guys. <laughs> oh, Dallas, all right, great. Oh, there's my Texans, I'm just north of you guys. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, the Master Naturals program is so wonderful. Barbara, welcome, New York. Seems like YouTube just isn't wanting to merge. So, oh, okay. So it, I wish technology would merge. Why? <laughs> so we'll stop. We're, we're recording anyway, so we'll be able to post it on after the fact, and that's what matters. Okay. So stop the live stream there. And then, Jill, let me get your slides up so we can okay. get ready to go. Perfect. Yeah, everybody, we're so lucky. Caroline is amazing. She is much more tech savvy than I. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Okay. And then we will present. And first of all, thank you to Jill for doing this tonight. These are always the highlight of my Thursday. Oh, good. <laughs> They're the highlight of my week as well. I'm so grateful to all of you guys for coming to hang out with us and talk citizen science for our educator webinar series. Um, it's, it's definitely the highlight of my week. So um, yeah, welcome everybody. Uh, we are so glad that you're here with us. We know everybody's so busy. It's the new normal. Everybody's got so much going on and just navigating everything. So we're grateful for you for spending your time with us to talk about citizen science, especially citizen science projects for our remote, online, and distributed learners this spring. We are ex so excited about the topic tonight of backyard bio blitz. So we'll be talking about how to backyard bio blitz using the iNaturalist tool. Um, and then also talk about the city nature challenge, which in a nutshell this year has kind of turned into um, a backyard bio blitz. I know for us in Texas, like our state parks have now closed. Um, so we truly will be doing very, very local observations, but I'm really excited about it. Uh, so as you guys know, April is Citizen Science Month all month long. Uh, and so we're hosting weekly educator webinars every Thursday evening at this time. Different projects and themes are highlighted each week. And so in our weekly webinars, we share resources associated with that week's topic. So just like our last week's, we'll share a Google Doc. We'll put the link right into the chat pod towards the end of the webinar, and it'll have all of the links and all of the resources that we highlight tonight. So don't feel like you have to be taking notes. I want this to be relaxing and fun for you. So um, have your favorite beverage, enjoy. So you'll be getting a Google Doc link right in our chat pod um, that'll have all the resources plus additional ones that relate to tonight's topic. Um, so every and everything that we talk about tonight is of course free and open source. We love that. And then throughout, feel free to comment and chat in the chat pod throughout the webinar. We really love that. We welcome um, ideas, resources, tips, uh, suggestions. We love to crowdsource ideas in the spirit of citizen science. So feel free at any time to do this. 
Oh, absolutely, Linda, welcome. In fact, Linda, shout out to Dr. Cook. Um, she shared a great resource from NCELA, the National Science Education Leadership Association. And so, uh, Linda, I put that, that link is gonna be in our um, Google Doc that we'll share tonight as well. It was such a great resource for educators. Yeah, thank you and your team, amazing. So next slide. Oh, and I see a Q&A question. Oh, thanks, Gerald. Is there a way to get the Google Doc? Absolutely. Oh my gosh, yes. I can get you the old Google Docs as well. Definitely. <laughs> Great question. Awesome. So next slide. Yeah, so welcome. Feel free to continue um, with introductions in the chat pod, where you're from, what you teach, what you hope to get out of the webinar, anything. It's a public space for everybody. And something to think about, because it is a strange word, feel free to share in the chat pod your thoughts about what is a BioBlitz, because every time I type it on a PowerPoint or Microsoft Word, it's not a recognizable word in the English language. <laughs> so it's a, it's a creation, but it does have some meanings, but I would love to hear what folks think. Um, so feel free to, to type in the chat pod, what is a BioBlitz? And I'll do a short introduction while folks are brainstorming. Um, my name's Jill Nugent, so I'm thrilled to be, this is the highlight of my week. I live in North Texas and I teach science online, Sci360. In fact, I don't know if any of my students are here. Some were thinking about coming tonight. Hi guys, if you are. <laughs> and I serve as the Associate Dean of Science at SNHU online um, and serve on the SciStarter team and write citizen science columns for NSTA journals. And I also enjoy facilitating um, educator workshops for citizen science in the classroom. Um, I've, I just love citizen science. I got hooked. Um, my first job after undergrad was at a natural science museum. So since then, I mean, I've just seen its impact with so many audiences, the public, K-12, pre-K through 12, teacher, professional development, college, all audiences. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to share it with you guys and we welcome your expertise as well because we have a lot of experts on the phone in the area of science, science education, and citizen science. And I love that brainstorm. Linda, thank you. So she's sharing. Yeah, I, I love that. Recognizing or identifying biologic organisms within a certain time period. That is perfect. I love that definition. And we can even kind of break down the word like bio when we learned in like middle school, what's the definition of biology? Bio is life. Um, exactly. So it's that it's studying all of the living things, a survey of living species in a designated area for a set amount of time. Um, so I like Linda's definition better than what I just rattled off, <laughs> but you, you've got it. And so um, doing a backyard bio blitz, especially with the city nature challenge, it's, it's over those four days, so a certain period of time, certain locations, and surveying any living thing that you see. Now, since this is an educator webinar, and we work with learners of all ages, the very young, even the high school students need to be reminded that um, for the city nature challenge and iNaturalist, the critters that we're looking for are the wild critters um, <laughs> because I've worked with high school students and they, they don't, I think they're just having so much fun. You know, they might take a picture of a cow, which is exciting. Cows are amazing. But um, the, this tool, of course, is looking for the wild critters. So always good to remind our learners kind of what we're looking for. We love dogs and cats, but put those on Instagram. <laughs> Next slide. So just as a reminder for everybody, some of you guys are old hats at this, the citizensciencemonth.org is the one-stop shop page for everything in April. Projects, resources, um, webinars, projects to do in the home, online, safely, uh, to stay healthy, maintain social distancing, and of course, flatten the curve. So all of these events, Citizen Science Month, City Nature Challenge, is um, they're all going on, but the emphasis to keep everybody healthy and safe, that's the most important. Um, but with some tweaks, you know, backyard bio blitz, we can do that. Um, and during such a stressful time, being in nature and celebrating it is just so, so therapeutic. So this is a great page for resources. I know the students love the certificates that are available on the page. You can send them to your learners. So that's a one-stop shop. I know that exactly, Barbara, I love that. The data, I'm so excited to see the, the data. 
um, this year. I know because some wild, like I saw some wild critters locally that I hadn't before. Um, I can't wait to see the results. Yeah, and the City Nature Challenge folks are great about sharing the results in May. Perfect, so next slide. And here's our calendar. The reason that we hosted tonight on the 16th, the Backyard Bio Blitz topic, is because next Friday, the City Nature Challenge starts. And so what we hope is that covering it tonight, if you are an educator or, you know, you might be a parent with kids at home and you are now homeschooling, <laughs> um, you'll be ready with resources and tools in your back pocket so that you can engage um, during the City Nature Challenge, which starts next week. So the Bio Blitz is the 24th, 25th, 26th, and 27th, but then after that, through almost May 4th, um, observation identification can still take place. So to be honest, um, next week and the week after, the City Nature Challenge, iNaturalist, this could be your science curriculum. Um, I know some of my friends have been struggling. They're like, my kids are done with what should have taken a long time. They're done with it in really short time. And so if you are in need of, of really anything for science engagement, uh, this, this can definitely fill the bill. And it's real world science, which is, which is fantastic. Next slide. And then for anybody new, um, this is the SciStarter.org website. And so if you're ever interested in exploring other projects, thousands of others, you can use the, um, the SciStarter project finder to get matched with lots of other citizen science projects um, that, are, that are available. So next slide. Sorry, one second. Oh my gosh, what's going on? Oh, no worries. Oh, it was my YouTube. Computer just starts updating on me. Okay, is this the slide <laughs> we're supposed to be at? Yeah, perfect, Caroline, you're amazing. Yeah, so tonight, we're so excited. Tonight we're gonna focus, so the Project Finder can connect and match you with thousands of citizen science projects. It's amazing. I start my educator webinars off with an exploration of that. But tonight, I'm so excited to share with you guys that we're gonna focus on iNaturalist. So it has a website, iNaturalist.org. It also has apps, which are great for observations in the field, free mobile apps. Um, this project, I mean, I've, people that use it love it. I'm, I'm, the, I'm one of them. Um, and it's a community for naturalists, really 21st century naturalists, we should say, to study and document biodiversity, the plants, the animals, the wild critters all around us. You literally could have a distance learning science, biology, life science class just with iNaturalist. In fact, you know, I, I work and teach online so all of our courses were in that format, you know, for this spring already, but I've been working with some folks and friends who have switched from brick and mortar labs really mid semester and they had to go to 100% distance labs and they thought, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Well, iNaturalist has filled the bill and met their need. Um, it's impactful for science learning outcomes. It's a hit with the students and it's such an excellent um, it's always such an excellent engagement tool. And since it, it's all about studying biodiversity that's all around us, um, it's, it can fit uh, really for almost any biology topic uh, because any kind of living thing in the natural world has been documented on iNaturalist. So just a great tool. So next slide. And some of you guys have seen this before. I love using analogies. <laughs> so um, any art history majors, please correct me. I think this is by George Sura. I hope I'm pronouncing his name close to accurate. <laughs> um, but this is his beautiful pointillism painting. Um, and I love, <laughs> I love it. Close enough. We'll take it. Thank you. Thanks, guys. <laughs> I know I wish if you had audio, you could help 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 me. Um, Lagrange, I won't even try and say the name of the painting because that, that's that'll be worse. But um, it, it's a great analogy for uh, for the iNaturalist tool and citizen science and crowdsource science. So of course, this is pointillism. And we see this beautiful picture. We know there's people and animals and trees and we, we kind of see everything. 
So then on the, okay, we can go next slide. It kind of breaks it down. Perfect. So on the next slide, we still see the beautiful painting at the top, but then as it kind of gets closer and closer, we see that this beautiful work of art, it's composed of just little dots. And I, I love that when we talk about I naturalist because, um, all, you know, my little, me going out in my little backyard and taking pictures of my ants and spiders, <laughs> maybe a hawk, um, and you know, the oak tree, that's awesome. Like it's an observation at a place in time. But when you combine my backyard data with your backyard data and yours and yours and yours and people around the world, we get this amazing snapshot of life on earth um, that is, it's truly comprehensive and it's, it's just so amazing. And scientists can't be out there, you know, studying everything in nature all the time. But when you add up all of the people around the world that are engaged in citizen science, it's helping fill gaps in data and just adds to our understanding of our natural world, which is just so amazing. One thing that I'm super excited about with the City Nature Challenge, it started in 2016. And so I feel like I'm just so excited because every year at the same time, we're having observations documented now globally because it is a global BioBlitz event now. Um, and so I think, you know, when in 50 years, when we look back, I mean, what a record we'll have for different species and change over time. So um, yeah, so this is a good analogy if you're introducing it to students. Um, this, this painting is a, is a good one and the art teachers will love you. Gerald, yes, oh my gosh. Yes, that is true, I naturalist new species have been discovered. In fact, if you guys ever get a chance, there's so many articles out there. If you even Google like iNaturalist and click on news in Google, oh my gosh, the discoveries. And we'll highlight two in this presentation, but there's so many others. It was actually hard to just pick two, <laughs> but great, great point. That's so true. Next slide. And this was a neat iNaturalist um, image. They were celebrating a milestone for a number of users and observations. And so um, they came up with this image composed of users' profiles. Um, and so, you know, it's just neat to see, like, you know, my eyes might see a certain number of things, but with all of these people's eyes together around the globe, just the number of observations that we can make when it's, when it's in a shared database, um, it's just, it gets me so excited. I, I love it. Um, now before, so I'm going to pause before we go to the next slide. I want to ask this awesome group, um, cause this is fun to do with students too. What do you guys think right now on iNaturalist? What are some of the top species observed, um, right now on iNaturalist? You can type it in the chat pod. Um, and I, I did the screenshot this morning, so it's, it's fresh. Ooh, fungi, love the fungi, they're so cool. <laughs> birds, ooh, nice, look at bugs, birds. Snails, awesome, spiders. Local, exactly, yep. Birds. So these are great. And actually, I think birds were on there. And Caroline, you can go to the next slide because it's always eye-opening. Um, so yeah, so here's a screenshot. So globally on iNaturalist, as of today, this is what we see. So isn't that funny that the mallard is the top observation? And I love showing this to students because when I look at this, I see flowers, a pretty butterfly, a pretty, some pretty birds. It's missing a lot of the unhuggables, right? Like, like where are the fungi? <laughs> um, because you're right, like you guys know, you guys know the diversity that's out there. Um, like there are so many invertebrates and there are so many, you know, green plants that don't have flowers. So this always interests me and it, it makes sense because I find myself doing it too, where I'm like, oh, a squirrel, I'm gonna take a picture of the squirrel um, instead of like the tiny uh, thing that I don't even know what it is. <laughs> 
Um, so it's good to, to kind of show this and highlight this with your students. Like all of these are amazing observations and we want this stuff and it's great. Um, and But don't forget the unhuggables, uh, especially this year. Um, I think it's really important this year as we, we do our hyper local backyard bio blitz, um, look at the small stuff, the smallest plants and animals and fungi. Um, those are observations too. Uh, so, so that's, and Linda, yeah, the mallards, I know, and they're so great. I mean, I love, I love ducks and they're so pretty and you can get good pictures of them. I, I, I like animals. I can get easy. I'm a terrible photographer. I always tell people when I went to Yellowstone, I saw grizzly bears and I took pictures and they literally look like yellow, uh, chocolate labs. Um, so anything like flowers that don't move, I will take a picture of because I, I can't mess it up too bad but um but yeah this is fun to think about with students um all of these are great observations but don't forget especially in the backyard bio blitz take pictures of those unhuggables or those not so cute cute things um and and also think small tiny plants and animals one other tip since we are doing very local observations this year don't forget about the wildlife inside your home i've actually never done that during the City Nature Challenge, but iNaturalist and the City Nature Challenge actually welcome observations from inside your home. So if you see a wolf spider or a cricket that got in, that can be an observation to be uploaded to. Um, there's even been some a citizen science project, um, the wildlife of our homes uh, from the Rob Dunlab on iNaturalist. And there's been some neat discoveries. Um, was it a camel or cave cricket on the East Coast and basement? Something was discovered. Lots of exciting observations. And to my knowledge, there's never been a bed bug observation. <laughs> so, hey, maybe this year we can get a bed bug observation. It's a critter. Um, so bio blitz inside the home. I know my garage, I'll go out there and um, sometimes I have geckos that overwinter in there. Who knows? I'll you know, since I can't go to State Park, I'm, I'm going to check it out this year. Um, some other observations that that may not be, um, you know, cute and fluffy, you can take pictures of scat, and that means wild animal poop. So if cottontail bunnies are doing their little pellets in your backyard, that counts. Coyote scat's a good one. It's easy to it's big enough, easy to recognize. Um, and anybody can probably find worm ca castings like worm poop it's like tiny little looks like tiny little balls of mud animal tracks their paw prints uh can can be an observation a lot of people will put um rec they'll see like raccoon tracks you can put that on iNaturalist crawdad chimneys often near water um and then here's a challenge too since we're going to be really close to home this year at observe at night it adds a whole other world to observe nature at night so the audio, you can sit outside and just kind of listen. Of course, if there's kids, you know, have an adult present, safety first. But listen for those owls, maybe a coyote howl, frogs and toads. April's also National Frog Month. So the frogs and toads are starting to call. And then um, on your resource packet, there's also a tip to, hey, go mothing in your backyard. Um, and I put the link, there's a Science Friday mothing. Um, it's such a helpful page. It's visual, easy to, easy to um, kind of at a glance know what to do. But in your backyard, you can put a white sheet, pop a light behind it, just sit back and relax. And the moths will come to that sheet. Uh, and I've, when I first did that, I was amazed at the diversity um, they're kind of our forgotten lepidopterans. The butterflies steal all their thunder, but the moths are truly amazing. Um, oh, great, Sophie. Yeah, it's really user-friendly. If we have time, we could. Yeah, it's, um, and actually, if you guys have any high school learners, they're amazing. They do this so, so easily. And I see a question, the question and answer pod. Um, do trees in your yard? Yeah, Linda, that's a great question. That can be a challenge. You're right, like trees could count. Um, if you've got some, like there's some people in Texas who have like, they've replanted native stuff, but it maybe it's in a prepared bed. Um, you can click, when you put the observation at iNaturalist, you can click that it's cultivated. Um, so just to note that it's not like wild on a tall grass prairie. So yeah, that's okay. That was a lot of, there was a lot of talk um, with the City Nature Challenge teams 
um, 2019, mostly fall of 2019. Um, oh yes, good tip, MP3. Yeah, because I've otherwise it won't upload. Good point, Gerald. Um, so yeah, that's that's the kind of way to go at that it's cultivated. Great questions. And then next slide. So here are the players that we'll talk about, and these are amazing organizations. So iNaturalist, of course, um, is the tool that we'll use that we'll make our observations on, and that's now part of the Cal Academy of Sciences and National Geographic. And then the City Nature Challenge is the event um, that uses iNaturalist as the tool, and the City Nature Challenge was founded and is organized by the Cal Academy of Science and the Natural History Museum of, of LA. Um, so that kind of gives an overview. Um, so just to give kind of a, in a nutshell, the City Nature Challenge, as we said before, is in its fifth year, and it started as a friendly competition in 2016 between LA and San Francisco. Um, Lila Higgins with the Los Angeles, the Natural History Museum of LA County, and then Allison Young at the California Academy of Sciences were the co-founders. So it was a friendly challenge between, um, between two cities. It was during the first ever Citizen Science Day, so that was back when it was just a day. Now we have a Citizen Science Month. Um, but it was so successful between those two cities, they had over 20,000 observations made by more than a thousand people. And so in 2017, they invited cities from around the US to participate. So it went national in 2017. That's when I got involved and D Team DFW started um, since 2017. And then it was so exciting in 2018, the City Nature Challenge became an international event. Um, so 18, 19, and now 20, it's a, it's a global event. Um, so it, it invites people around the world to find and document those plants and wildlife in cities, you know, across the globe. Um, this year, it's not so much a competition. You know, usually we're all checking the leaderboard for our city. Uh, we, we might still do that out of good fun, but especially with the, pand the global pandemic going on, um, it's just not it's not a competition this year. Everybody's really embracing the collaborative aspect of the City Nature Challenge, um, kind of that healing power of nature to allow people to document local biodiversity in any way that they can. And I'm really excited. Like you guys made some great points about how this year may be different. I, I can't wait to see um, what comes out of it. And I'm looking forward to staying close to home and really looking small and documenting my backyard biodiversity like I haven't before. <laughs> Next slide. So here are the important dates. So the April 24th through 27th, that's the time period that you'll be bio blitzing. Um, and I mean, it starts at midnight in your time zone. Um, so you can get started like that first, like I, I stay up that first Thursday night and when it clicks to like 12.01 into Friday, I go out and look for if there's toads or moths by my porch light or something. So um, take advantage of day and night. And uh, there's definitely equitable ways to get involved for our learners that have different resources. Um, so some students that may want to do everything online, they're going to be a huge help this year because what we're always needing are more people at home on a computer helping with identifications. Um, so if there are some learners who want to do that, they will be extremely valuable. I know Team DFW, we looked at our data for a couple of years and we really need um, we really needed more people helping with IDs to get to research grade, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But um, and I know I heard that the Master Naturalist Organization put an email out, um, I think yesterday or the day before, because our Master Naturalist, you guys are our green army, you guys are amazing. So I think there's gonna be more some Master Naturalists helping with IDs, which is just gonna help the science so much. Um, so I I can't wait. Um, so really by by participating in the City Nature Challenge, wherever you are, you can learn more about local nature, you can make your city a better place for everybody, you, your neighbors, plants and wildlife, and it's just a lot of fun too. So next slide. It's easy to get involved. In fact, this is, um, 
this one, two, three, it, this is also how you would use iNaturalist. You find wildlife or, or plants, um, any kind of wild organism, uh, take a picture, and then you upload it through Naturalist and it's shared in a shared database. So really, really easy to get involved, kind of like one, two, three, which I like that. <laughs> and then at the top, uh, results will be announced. It's a great STEM day, May 4th. May the 4th be with you. It's like uh, my STEM team always talks about, oh, May 4th. So that's easy to remember. The results will be announced then. And again, this year, it's not so much a competition. It's just a celebration of nature and science and everybody just who's helping document nature. So I mean, that'll, be, that'll be nice. Next slide. So here are some great, um, just some tips for, for our educators. Um, I think it's really helpful to get students, so maybe next week, early in the week, maybe Tuesday, Wednesday, um, have students start honing those observation skills, um, even the smallest of plants and animals. So one thing that I like to use is either, you know, toss a hula hoop if you have it in the backyard, if you wanna create with string or really anything. I mean, it could usually be grab four different things and create like a border in your backyard or you could have an official, like the below right is like an actual transect that maybe graduate students may use. Um, anything, you can get creative. You can kind of put that in your backyard and have or, or have learners go in their backyard in a certain space and challenge them to sit quietly and observe and document every living thing in that within that border. It, they can even look up to the sky. So there could be a, a turkey vulture gliding overhead. That counts too. So it could be like a, a cylinder up to the sky. Um, I found that that activity, sitting quietly and honing those observation skills, it really is a great kind of warm up before doing a bio blitz. Because I know sometimes students, when they're first doing it, they expect it to be like a zoo, right? Like all the mammals are right there, but that rarely happens. <laughs> so this is a great kind of warm up before, before you bio blitz. Um, so, oh, and let's see, there's a question. Oh yes, Bill, thank you. Yep, an MP3 file, if you record them, um, that can be uploaded as an observation. And they've definitely made it easier. I know when the audio file first launched, like I had trouble with it. I heard an owl, but I couldn't get it to upload. But it, it's, it's a lot more user-friendly now. Yep, I know, because those frogs are starting to call. The, the woodhouse toads are starting to scream. I love it. <laughs> Next slide. So here's the INAT homepage, and it's funny, I just grabbed a screenshot. It, it rotates pictures that's on, that are on the homepage, but shout out to Greg. He's, he's on this slide. Um, he's amazing. He's one of our Texas power users of iNaturalist. So uh, when you're on there, you get your username. He's a good one to follow. Uh, I love, he's, he's amazing, the number of, and he helps identify, um, you know, if you're submitting observations, he helps. Everybody on there is so nice and collaborative. So this is the inaturalist.org homepage. And truly, when you're using this, the world becomes your lab. It, it's a 21st century teaching toolbox. Learners have the opportunity con to contribute to real world biodiversity research through a globally connected community. Um, really amazing stuff. Oh, and another good tip. Thank you, Gerald. You're right. That's a good point too. So, you know, the app, sometimes during the challenge, my, my phone feels like it's on fire. And so that's a good point for some of the stuff. Definitely through the laptop, the computer, it's, um, it, it facilitates the upload for, especially for audio. That's a great tip. I forgot about that. Great. And so um, iNaturalist, you know, when you think about it, it's only been around, um, I mean, it, it's been around a while now, but it was founded in 2008. So, I mean, in the scheme of things, not, a, not too, too far back, but it, I love this part of the story that it was, a, it was founded as part of a graduate project at the University of California, uh, UC Berkeley. Um, so that's really exciting. Whenever I have classes, I'm like, I mean, take advantage, students, of your classes when you get to develop projects. Like, this was a result of a project. Um, that is just such a great story. So with this tool, the nat our natural world becomes a living learning lab for student exploration, observation, and discovery. So the main goal of this tool is to connect people and nature 
in addition to contributing useful global biodiversity data in support of science. So it is still that serious science. So we love that. Um, I have found that for an educator, the opportunities with this tool are unlimited. You guys probably have ideas I haven't even thought of. So feel free to share, because um, we've seen student questions can drive exploration of all kinds. They can analyze historical data. They can provide data visualization. I mean, some of them come up with amazing data viz tools that I didn't even know were out there. Um, they've engaged in mapping activities. And learners of all ages can create those digital artifacts like field guides or species briefs, um, whether they're printing things out and having it a 3D artifact or it's digital. There's so much. Um, it's just really exciting. And again, it works on all devices and it helps bring real world science into um, learning environments, which right now are at home <laughs> for, predominantly. So the world becomes our lab, which, um, which is exciting. You know, for science, you don't have to have your students, you know, online doing interactives. With iNaturalist, they can get out, observe nature in their backyard, um, and they're, they're doing that real world science. So it's so exciting. Next slide. This is iNaturalist in a nutshell. I, I love this image because it really communicates how to use the tool and what it's all about. Um, and in a nutshell, it really turns um, it turns a photo into an observation. So that's powerful when we think about it because people are sharing photos on, you know, Instagram, which is awesome. But when you share a photo with iNaturalist, it turns a photo into an observation, a data point, right? Like we talked about those dots, a data point of an organism at a specific place in time. And so that's just, um, that's just really exciting because it's there for, for archival research. Um, and, and then even current scientists are on there learning about species and sometimes seeing new observations. And we'll, we'll talk about some examples in a couple of slides. Next slide. So here's the, the at a glance on the, I, the iNaturalist project on the SciStarter page. It gives a great stepping point to, um, to jump off to the project. And you can see how popular it is. Lots of people love this project and it's one of the SciStarter affiliates, which is great as well. Next slide. I'll go a little faster. I noticed the time. <laughs> and then this is really exciting. So the SciStarter education page, there's a whole education page with select projects curated for um, different grade bands. iNaturalist is a project that is featured on the education page. And so this is, and this will be in the links we send you, so you don't have to worry about writing them down or, or making notes. Um, it's an at-a-glance resource for educators with a getting started video, links, and then step-by-step -step how to um, use the project in your classroom. So in addition to the regular SciStarter page for iNaturalist, um, there's also the page on the education page that gives specific information for educators, which is, which is helpful. Next slide. I love highlighting this because I don't know if it's, I mean, some people know, do know about it, but I love to highlight it because it's just so exciting. Um, so GBIF, that's kind of the acronym that's down there. When our students submit observations to iNaturalist that are research grade, and what that means is research grade is an observation with a species identification agreed upon by multiple individuals. So if I submitted a picture of like a cottontail and two people agreed with me, that's going to be research grade. Um, that data then, the research grade data, are shared with GBIF. It's an online database, Global Biodiversity Information Facility. And it's often consulted and cited in biodiversity research. So that's so exciting because when your students have a research grade observation, first of all, they get so excited about that. But um, they're also serving as contributors to global biodiversity research, which is very exciting. They're also, the students I found are also fascinated by the features and functions of iNaturalist, the platforms technology. Um, so you can also share with your learners behind the scenes of iNaturalist, there's artificial intelligence technology, so AI. Um, basically the AI technology 
it's kind of referring back to historical crowdsource identifications and the AI, it's going to read and analyze the pixels in your picture that compose your actual photograph that you submitted. And based on the, the, the analysis of the pixels, the AI technology can suggest an identification for your organism. And I have to say the accuracy is amazing. And just like algorithms and AI, as you feed it more data, it just gets better and better. So when it first launched, it was pretty good. But now, I mean, I talked about how bad of a photographer I am. I've submitted some pictures. I'm like, it's so fuzzy and blurry and far away. It's pretty close. I mean, I'm shocked. So that's a helpful tool if you're unsure of something. It's great to have a suggestion and then you can select that. But then again, if you don't know what it is, it, it's okay because this global community of naturalists, people are on there helping, um, helping with identification. So even if you don't know, like, like there are some plants, I have no idea what they are. Um, and I'll just put kingdom plantae. I mean, you can try and get it more closer to species than that, but I have put that before. But within hours, usually, sometimes minutes, there's an expert in that um, in that area who um, gets it closer to species, if not species. So the AI and then the human experts out there, you've got friends and helpers um, crowdsourcing the identification. So it really brings nature, science, and technology together in a way that really ignites curiosity and interest in all of our 21st century students. So um, definitely, well, it's a, it's a great one. Next slide. Here we go. We're going to talk about one of the one of the discoveries. <laughs> um, so if talking about discoveries on iNaturalist, um, this was one, it, it was known as the toilet weasel uh, story. So iNaturalist has a great blog and um, this elusive Colombian weasel was a blog uh, in December of 2018. And a guy named Juan found this critter, a very rare critter, uh, not even known to still be in the area in his home in his bathroom. Uh, so this was the Colombian weasel observation of the week. So uh, if you ever have these wild observations, you may get selected. I've never had one of mine featured, but I know somebody locally who has, and it is very exciting. So um, yeah, this is a great story. If you ever wanna read up on this, and there's a next slide, we've got another one as well. Another fun, um, another fun observation. <laughs> So some of you guys may recognize, in fact, I'll type it in the chat, but I'm going to type his, I'm going to type his INAT username in the chat pod, Sam Biology on the right. Um, this is another great story about an iNaturalist discovery. Uh, two Sams and the invasive emerald ash borer on iNaturalist. So on the left is 10-year-old Sam, and on the right is Sam, our Dallas-Fort Worth urban wildlife biologist and iNaturalist expert. He's amazing. Um, so the young Sam, he was on his driveway. So he was doing a backyard bio blitz um, on his driveway near Eagle Mountain Lake in West Tarrant County, 10 years old, and he saw a shiny green beetle and this young man, this young scientist, he took a picture of it. He put it on iNaturalist. Well, then Sam on, our, on the right, he saw this picture and he said, hmm. Uh, and so he forwarded it to some other colleagues. Just kind of take a look at this beetle, folks. What do you guys think? There was an expert consensus that 10-year-old Sam had taken the first picture of an invasive emerald ash borer in this area. It's an exotic beetle that should not be in Tarrant County. Uh, and so, um, yeah, it was, it, was, uh, it was found on the outskirts, outskirts of Fort Worth, which is part of one of the largest urban forests in the state of Texas. So this is like concerning that this invasive species is so close to um, a large urban forest. Uh, how, it's still a mystery how this beetle got there, something that's really exciting and to, to see that this young man, um, he also impacted policy in a way because now um, timber and quarantine, or timber and wood products are kind of quarantined in, uh, in the Fort Worth Tarrant County area because of this discovery to, con to contain any spread but just to show that this young man did a little backyard bio blitz, 
he uploaded an observation and he influenced real world science and practice and the search still goes on how did it make its way there are there others um, because biologists want to contain this invasive species and eradicate it yeah and every lots of love for sam we all love sam he's amazing so um yeah check him out on iNaturalist. he's he's a power user i'd say so many observations and identifications he's helped me a lot next slide and then for our youngest of learners, I love that iNaturalist has created Seek by iNaturalist. Um, this is for the youngest of learners, naturalists, and young scientists. Uh, they say like under 14 for iNatural for Seek by iNaturalist. If I, you know younger than that have used iNaturalist, but this tool is out there for the youngest of folks. So it uses the image recognition technology to identify all the wild things around you. One of the really great things for our elementary students that I absolutely love and they love it so much, they can earn badges for seeing different types of birds, amphibians, plants, and fungi in their area. And have, if you guys have seen um, the Our Planet series on Netflix, I really love, there was a beautiful photography. I, I was just in awe, videography, I guess. Um, with Seek by iNaturalist, learners can participate in monthly observation challenges with our planet on Netflix. They launch challenges. Um, so it, it's just, it's so exciting for, for the youngest of learners. Uh, and this is its page on the SciStarter page. Next slide. This is also a project, Seek by a Naturalist, is also um, featured on the SciStarter education page. So this is its page that has everything you need when you want to use Seek by a Naturalist with your learners. Um, it's got links, resources, three steps, and you're good to go. Um, this is kid safe, fun for families, no registrations involved, no user data is collected. It's just great for you know, families with really young kids who want to spend time exploring nature together. Uh, so definitely recommend that for the young, youngest of folks. And then of course, with the iNaturalist, even like I've had, I've worked with elementary teachers who have used iNaturalist and a lot of times they'll have like the, when we were in a, when we were back in a, like think back to 2019 when we were all in the same room together, um, the teacher might have a teacher account on iNaturalist and then you know students would go out and take pictures and then upload it through her account her or his account um so there you know young learners can use iNaturalist as well but this is another great uh option for for everybody next slide okay so this is really exciting i was telling you guys in earlier webinars how generous the citizen science global community is so um, I want to be sure and highlight this and share with you guys. Um, the City Nature Challenge folks have created a whole packet, I think it's four pages, um, that go over and have links of how to do the City Nature Challenge around your home. So I'll put it in the chat pod, but in the bigger link that I'm going to share with you guys, I also have this link in our Google Doc link that we'll share. Um, and I can put that, if you're grabbing links, I can pop that in as well. So just know that they're both available and um, this link is nested in the bigger link <laughs> that we have with all, with everything else. Yeah, Sophie, so they can't become part of the research. The, um, so it, you're right, like SEEK is more for an activity and fun. Um, so it is a little separate in that way, like don't, they won't be research grade observations. Um, there's less information collected. So yeah, SEEK is a good introductory fun activity um, to do. With, it, it's, it's amazing. But um, yeah, for, for City Nature Challenge, INAT is the, is the tool to use. Yep, great. So those are some, those are some links. Next slide. And then in addition to the SciStarter education pages, especially for INAT and SEEK for this week, um, that's there, lots of great, great resources and links and videos. Um, and then I'm gonna highlight the next three on the next three slides. So next slide. 
So inaturalist.org, not only do they have a teacher guide, but they also have a BioBlitz guide. So on inaturalist.org, there are amazing resources, and I've got those linked in our big G doc, Google Doc, too, so you don't have to write anything down. But one of the things that I love about their teacher guide is at the bottom, they actually link to teachers who are using it in the classroom. And some there's a middle school science educator that I met. Um, she had a really neat class page, and I, I've gotten a lot of project ideas from the, the people who um, shared their links for the iNaturalist teacher guide page. So just lots of nuggets in there to, to discover. Next slide. Sorry if you hear panting. My old dog Daisy just came over to join us. She's, she's 16, so she has some breathing problems. You're on medication though, so that's okay. <laughs> and then this is the City Nature Challenge um, Education Toolkit. Uh, so they've got activities for all different age and grade bands, um, really great stuff, um, different, different activities that students can do to kind of warm up before a bio blitz, um, lots of, lots of great stuff in there. And we've got that link in there for you guys as well. Next slide. And then finally, the Nat Geo and Nat Geo education pages. They've got some amazing BioBlitz education resources. And if you think back, there were a number of years where National Geographic every May was hosting a national BioBlitz. I think one year it was in Hawaii, one year it was in DC, one year it was in Louisiana, because I got to go to that. Um, lots of different, um, so they've collected and curated amazing documents over the year, years. And then with the education page, they've worked with teachers to write additional lesson plans. So I've linked all of those in the Google Docs. Um, oh, Catherine, how do we access? So the City Nature Challenge main page, it'll be in your Google Doc, but it's citynaturechallenge.org is like the home page. But then also, um, I'm gonna call, in fact, I think, maybe go to the next slide. It might be on the next page. I'm trying to remember if it's next. Yeah, okay, good, it, it was. <laughs> so this page, so citynaturechallenge.org is like the main event page with like all the information and great stuff. But then this page on iNaturalist, this is where the action will take place. And this will be in your GDoc. No, you're great, you're, per you're perfect on time, thank you. <laughs> so yeah, and you can see on the right members, you, we, you can actually join from iNaturalist, like click and join that project. So you're exactly right. This is where the action will take place starting next week and where all of the observations will upload. Um, and then one thing that's really cool is that each city also has its own page. So for example, I like, I'm going to join the Dallas Fort Worth one because that's where I live. And then the, this page as well, the, the whole thing. But the cool thing is if I, if I am just entering observations for my Dallas area, they're going to automatically be fed into this too. So it's just kind of nice. There's like less clicks for us participants to worry about. <laughs> um, they have, there's so many, so much amazing tech behind this page. It's truly, I'm in awe. It's so amazing. Uh, but yeah, so this will be where all of the action comes. The leaderboard will populate and you'll start to see the folks like, um, it's usually everybody, you know, think about the time zone. So Australia will start first and then it kind of sweeps across. Uh, so the leaderboard will be switching like crazy. It's, it's, it's really fun to watch, even though this year it's more collaborative, but um, I'm sure, I'm sure we'll all still, we, it's human nature, right? Where's my city? <laughs> How are we doing? Um, good stuff. Next slide. So I just put an inspirational quote, because this is really what it's all about. So good old Aristotle, in all things of nature, there is something of the marvelous and I think that's what the City Nature Challenge is all about. Even in our cities, um, really anywhere on earth, we can find natural things. And so this kind of documents them, it shares and celebrates them. And so this kind of is what it's all about. And, and I think it's really important, just have fun. Um, this should be something that's not stressful. It's fun, something to enjoy. I, I really can't wait to document nature close to home. Uh, I think that'll be really exciting. I can't wait to see the results of how many people engage. I mean, 
we potentially could see an uptick in engagement because people don't have to, you know, go to a park. They can, they can be very close to home. So it, it'll just be really, really neat to see what, um, you know, who joins the fun. Next slide. Yeah, so thank you guys so much. We so appreciate you guys coming. And if I can pop, um, pop any more links in, I will. Uh, we are here every Thursday in April, same time every Thursday. So next week is Earth Day as well. And so next week we'll be sharing Earth Day and Arbor Day projects that you can do. Lots of fun going on with that. It's the 50th anniversary of Earth Day next week. So lots of opportunities there as well. Um, and then the last one on April 30th, we'll cover some other projects. I'll share links of projects that are great, but we didn't get to cover. And then we're also gonna have some special guests come to our April 30th webinar. And I've just recently learned that they are going to bring badges to give you, which is awesome and exciting. Um, so I will pause. I know I've been talking so much. I will pause and take questions. If anybody has questions, we can, we can go over those. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pop our Google Doc again, just in case anybody didn't get it. We don't want anyone to not get that. Pop that in there. And you know what? One thing that I neglected to, um, to mention you know, City Nature Challenge, um, if you have kids doing it, one tip is, you know, send them, in, you know, they're in their backyard, take a picture, but upload them inside. I like to send them out, do it, come inside, sit down, crop and edit those photos, and then upload them. Um, that can help because sometimes the mobile app will start burning. <laughs> um, so they can, you know, have the phone plugged in inside, sit down, Another tip with the location, since we are gonna be close to home and back in our backyards, I always, when I do it at home, I obscure, I click obscure for the location. If I'm at a state park, I don't mind, you know, saying this was taken at blank state park. But at home, for the observations, I would just click obscure, just, you know, privacy safety. Um, and then just a reminder, if you're with, you know, some of the younger folks, younger students, just remind them, we love cats and dogs and cows and horses, but those are domesticated. Just put the wild critters on INAT. Um, oh, and Brent, let me see. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So that's a great question. If you don't have a city that's near you or one of the teams, that is A-OK. -okay. You can still bioblitz. Um, use iNaturalist anytime. Absolutely. Yep. And too, you can always help identify like others, others um, observations. Oh, yep. Yeah, great question. A teacher tracking the work of a student. So what I do is I have my students give me their iNat usernames. Like for example, mine is Jill Nugent. Um, so my students will send me their link um, and so you can do it that way. So what some teachers do, if it's like a, like, like, especially if they're documenting like their schoolyard biodiversity, they'll create an actual pro project for that location, which is really nice because then er all your students' observations feed into that. And then you can really see like, okay, this person made three observations on this date. Um, but yeah, if they can, if they can share with you their iNaturalist name and they can actually send it to you in a link you can be able to see all of their observations. Yep, great question. Yeah, hey, um, Jill, we had some uh, questions come in, the formal Q&A. Gerald asked, is there a way to get the Google Doc you shared last week? I thought I had saved it, but I can't find it. Yes, in fact, let me pop that into the chat pod. I'm gonna go grab that. I'm gonna find it, learn, I have it, I have it. I'm gonna grab it. <laughs> Yeah, and Jill, if it's okay with you, I think we should take all the Google Docs you've made and all the recordings we've done so far and put them all together in a blog post to help people out. Sure. Oh, absolutely. I know. I love one-stop shops. <laughs> Let's do it. And then we had a question from Linda. She said, do trees in your yard count but not planted shrubs or flowers? Question mark. Right, exactly. So like the trees, um, I think this is it. Okay, I'm going to pop this in. Gosh, I hope this is it or else you guys are going to be like, this is like a work document, Jill, that I didn't want. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pop this in. You guys tell me if this is... <laughs> yes, 
Yeah, so you can, if it's like, if it's flowers in a flower bed, um, native flowers, you could just click that they're cultivated. Yep, they're not like wild. Yep. And, and then yeah. I think, oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, I see it. Yeah, that's a great question. So City Nature Challenge, definitely go through iNaturalist just to be sure that everything is, you know, for the captured for the research and the project and points. Great questions. Yeah, Gerald, check that link out to see if it was for last week. It should say air, water, soil, sky. <laughs> oh my gosh, and next week is Earth Day. I'm so excited. I know. That'll be, that'll be so exciting. It's, it'll be different, but exciting. Oh, it is. Thank you so much for confirming that. Great. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, if it came from me, though, it has to do with something with science. It's all my Google Docs, but I'm glad it's the right one. <laughs> yeah, we can hang around for questions if anybody has any, or suggestions. If you've got tips, suggestions, that's how I learn. I, I, none of my ideas are original. <laughs> But thank you all so much for coming because I know it's it's late, especially for our East Coasters. But yeah, I, I truly can't wait. I you know how kids sometimes or well kids do, kids get excited around the holidays. What I found is um, this is like, this is how I used to feel in December as a child, the week, like when City Nature Challenge comes. I know I'm a nature nerd, but I hope, I hope it's like that for you as well. It's it's so fun, and I'm excited to engage with it differently this year. They, oh, great. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Same. We um, have a question from Saray. Saray says, my ideas are never original, just modified from other great ideas. Hey, that's the beauty of science. We're building on each other. Yes. I think I, that's why I like crowdsource science so much. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you, Linda. Oh, let's see what we get to do. Oh, oh, nice. Okay, so we've got veterans. That's what I thought. Yeah, you guys have done. That is fantastic. So you guys had a new spider discovered. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, how, like when kids get to be a part of that, but yeah, it's the most amazing thing. Oh, that is so cool. I love that. I know, and I can't wait to see that the, the folks like Allison and Lila, after the City Nature Challenge ends and the data are all in, they are so great about sharing. Um, and it, I, it, they must, it must take so much effort to go through all the global data, but they do. They'll share out like the highlights of it. If new species were discovered, um, it's so exciting to read through that because it's, it's just, it's regular folks that were part of that. And that's huge for science. I love it. There's just nothing better. Oh, fantastic. Oh, that's great. Yeah, so you'll be Team DFW. We, it was funny. One of the years, we won for some, we won for some, because they have different categories, like top people with their teams with the most participants, team with the most observations, teams with the most species identified. There's lots of fun categories, but the research IDs, it was like, oh man, we need to, we need more help with that. I, and I think sometimes, um, I think someone said that some of the lab groups, so for example, um, you guys may have like high school science students or college science students. This could be a great way if they could just help in the background for any team help that can be part of their assignment, help them identify other observations. Um, yeah, because that getting it to a research grade helps helps the science so much. And it's a category for the City Nature Challenge too. So there's always like a top winner. I think did San Francisco win last year? I'll have to check. That some of the teams, I get jealous, some of the teams have access to, to ocean, water, what, you know, like all these ecosystems. <laughs> but, you know, one thing here, go, go with the moths, go in the lakes, go in the wetlands. If it's, if it's close to your home or, you know, some people have that on their land. So fun. Let's just all hope, I hope that all of your teams have good weather, clear skies, good weather. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, I hope so. And feel free to reach out if you need anything. Um, we are happy to help and loop back and let us know how it goes. I can't wait to hear how it goes for everybody. 
See you all next Thursday. Yeah, thanks everyone. See you then. Have a great thanks. night. Oh, thanks, Caroline. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing and then um, we'll end it here and I'll email you the recording. Oh, perfect. Thanks everybody. Bye. Bye, have a good night. <laughs>